good evening and thank you for joining us for the Grace Express with Grace Hill Church and Dr. Bell Cotton, our senior pastor. Look, I want to welcome you all into the sanctuary, you know, and just, just begin to just create your own atmosphere. You know, and there could have been some things that you've been going up against this this day that God has delivered you from. You may look back and not think that it was a deliverance, but the word of the Lord says in uh, the 106th Psalm, praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good for his mercy endureth yeah. forever. Yeah. Verse 2 says, who can utter the mighty acts mm -hmm. of the Lord, who can show forth all his praises. Mm -hmm. See, right there, you ought to be, just begin to praise God, because see, the thing about it is, no matter what we've been through yes. and what we've yes. seen, God is yes. still good, because we still have the breath of life in our body. We still have another, another opportunity to show him that we love him and to receive the love from him. So right there, just begin to praise God. You know, it doesn't matter what the enemy has come up against you. God has delivered us from him, them all. Praise him because he is mighty, he is wonderful, he is, he is greatly to be praised. This has been your call to worship. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, how we thank you for this day, oh God, and we just give you honor and glory that's due your name. Lord, first of all, we want to ask you for forgiveness, Lord God, for those things that we have done that are not like you, Lord God. And we ask that you deliver us from them in the name of Jesus. Father, we lift up this worship experience unto you, Lord God, and we just ask that you would just have your way. Send your Holy Spirit now, Lord God, to rest and abound, Lord God, not only in the sanctuary, Lord God, but in each and every home, Lord, that is present on this evening, Lord God. Lord, we lift up our... Uh, everyone that is participating this this evening, Lord God, we ask that you would touch each and every one of us from the top of our heads, Lord God, to the soles of our feet, Lord God. Right now, Lord God, our pastor, as she comes, Lord God, to preach the word, Lord God, we ask that you would speak into her ear gates, Lord God, give her a rhyme of word, Lord God, a word in season, Lord God, for a time such as this, Lord God, and for everyone that is in, in attendance, Lord God, we ask that you would meet them at that point of need, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for it, and it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Now let us go high in our worship with our exhortation with Minister Cook. Amen. 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 Glory to God, saints of God. We just give God thanks. We give him praise. We give him all the glory for us being in the house of God on tonight. Our exhortation is coming from 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 through 5. And it reads, we are human. We do not wage wars as humans do. We use God's mighty weapon, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach and teach them to obey Christ. Yeah. I just want to encourage you on tonight that no matter what has been coming against you, no matter what has been waging war against you, you don't have to fight alone. God has already given you the weapons and he has already prepared you yeah. on tonight. He's already made a way for you. When you call upon the name of Jesus, demons tremble. When you call upon the name of Jesus, demons flee. So you don't have to go at war alone. You don't have to go at these trials in these situations. Go in God, knowing that God has it already figured out, already worked out, and he has a plan to get you out. So I encourage you on tonight as we go higher it with praise and worship with Pastor Mr. Ratliff. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you on this evening, God, asking you to move by your spirit and by your power. We ask now for forgiveness of our sins and create within us clean hearts, O oh God. Renew the right spirit within us, God. We ask now that you will, O oh God, just heal our bodies and heal our minds and heal our hearts, O oh God. And we just ask, God, that every distraction now, Father God, be not, uh, not the center of our attention. And we ask now, Lord God, that you cover our bodies, cover our spirits, cover our souls even now, God. And we ask now that as we go into your word, Lord, that you will help me to deliver this word, God, unhindered today. God, you know the things that are trying me, and I ask now in the name of Jesus, God, that you just surround me with your angels, and I ask now, God, that you just set forth, Lord God, before me that that you will have me to do. I ask that the people of God will receive your word as I am your vessel, God, that you will pour your Holy Spirit upon us even now, God, for for deliverance and for, for whatever it is that you want us to do, God, and we thank you for life application that is found in the word. In Jesus' name, I pray. We pray. Amen. We believe because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross of Calvary, we have a legacy of love, grace to do greater works, and faith to see the unseen hand of God at work. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We want to pray and we want to thank God, of course, for um, Sister Cheryl Meshack. I was able to go visit her and her daughter today. And her granddaughter, um, Shamira Cole, Sha Angel Miracle is her name. Sha Angel Miracle Meshack is in the hospital in the ICU, coded on last night overnight. And so, um, but it's showing good signs um, today. And we want to pray that she will continue to show good signs and make her way uh, back to a full recovery. Amen. And so we just thank God for his great grace and his awesome mercy. Um, the fact that she is still alive today. Come on here, somebody. The church say amen and bless the Lord. And so we bless the Lord, amen. And we had some bad weather in the area today, as is evidenced by my boots today. But we did have um, bad weather in areas. So we want to pray for the aftermath of that weather that we have had today and that people's um, lives who are, have been affected by tornadoes and storms, branches are all over the city. We see a lot of debris across our city. So just be careful and take your time when you're driving. Trees um, tend to fall after storms. It's the aftermath of a storm sometimes. Dr. Sonia Mixon was on Clubhouse with us today. And one thing she talked about was a lot of times when people feel here that you are cancer free, they don't know that there's still a journey beyond cancer free. There's an aftermath. She still has to take five years of medications and different things. That, so there's still a process, a before and after process. When people lose their loved ones, they still have a process. Yeah. Things, holidays, just it, it could be a day that is no holiday. It's just because you loved your loved one. So we're all in different spaces going through several things. So let us have grace toward one another another and um, the enemy has been trying me so if my eyelid dips a little bit it's because the enemy I had Bell's palsy a couple of years ago but I rebuke it in the name of Jesus and I know when there's um, storms in the area um, and you have certain pressure changes things like that begin to happen to people so I'm putting it out there I shall not have a Bell's palsy but my face has been doing this thing I had to kind of sit with myself and hope that I could talk today but I'm here, amen? And I hope that in my being here, it teaches you that whatever it is that the Lord has called you to, to show up, because in your showing up, you show the enemy that I'm going to let God be God in my life. I have a determination that I'm going to do what God called me to do. I'm going to be steadfast. And so I praise him and I bless him. I've been in a couple of spaces today, but nonetheless, God is good. And I praise and I bless his holy and his righteous name. We're going to chapter 8 of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel, when we look at 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel, this you see into the life of the preacher. You see into the life of the prophet. You see into the life of those who serve the Lord. You see in the life into the households and different things like this. A lot of the times we see what happened in Eli's house 
what happened in Samuel's house, what happened in David's house. So that's why I like first and second Samuel. I said I was going to take the next couple of years to really go into an in-depth study with the possibility, if the Lord says the same, of doing some writing from this, um, from these two books to teach us. We see, we see the life of the prophet, the priest, uh, of the king, of those in those households holes who serve God. We see their lives outside of the church, if you would, outside of the pulpit. What does life look like? Remember Absalom and how he acted out? That was, even though you're the king's son, you got this thing going on outside. You know, and it was because of what was going on in the house because of what happened to your sister. So getting into that intimate space that some of us try to hide sometimes. So we're gonna look in our homes and in our hearts today. So when we go to 1 Samuel, the eighth chapter, it reads as such, and I want you to just keep your seats because I'm going to stay in this text on tonight. And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. He made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel and the name of his second um was Abiah. They were judges in Beersheba, and his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after Lu filthy lucre at that, after lucre, and took bribes and perverted judgment and perverted judgment. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel. So here comes the elders, the leaders of Israel. They gathered themselves together and they come to they come to Samuel unto Ramah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Doesn't this sound familiar? It is the same thing that happened a few chapters over when we're starting to deal with with the sons of Eli who did something very similar and then Samuel had to be called and when Samuel was called upon here it is that um, the, you, you remember Ichabod being over the temple doors because of what, Sam, what, what Eli's son did. We see the repetition of things. And all too often in the body of Christ, we're starting to see the repetition of the wrong things rather than the duplication of the miracles of God. And verse 5 says, And said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. I'm going to come back to that. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. He did the right thing. And the Lord said unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee. I've been talking about this for a little bit here, but I had to put it into our text tonight. They have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, said the Lord, that I may not reign over them. According to all thy works, which I have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, just the ungrateful people, even unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. Now, therefore, hearken unto their voice, how be it yet protest solemnly unto them and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that asked of asked of, a, of him a king. And he said, This will be the manner of the king that they shall um, that they shall have, that shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for himself for his chariots and to be his horsemen and some shall run before his chariots and he will appoint him captains over thousands and captains over fifties and will set them to ear his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his instruments of war and instruments of his chariots and he will take your daughters to be confectionaries to be cooks and to be bakers and he will take your fields and your vineyards and your olive yards even the 
best of them. It looks like he's just taking and not giving anything. But you had a God who was the King of kings and Lord of lords that would have given you everything. And give them to his servants and he will take the tenth of your seed and of your vineyards and give to his officers and to his servants. And he will take your men servants and your maid servants and your goodliest young men and your asses and put them to his work. And he will take the tenth of your sheets and ye shall be his servants and ye shall cry out in that day because your king which 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 he shall have chosen you and the lord will not hear you in that day why because you want a king right. nevertheless the people refused they refused in in verse 19 of chapter 7 of first samuel is the the thematic verse or, or the verse that we our focal verse for tonight nevertheless the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, nay, but we will, we, somebody shout will. will, we will have a king over us. So they express what their will was. Mm -hmm. Verse 20 says that we also may be like all the nations. I had a mama that said, I ain't they mama. That's right. I know that's not right English, but that's how she used to put it down. And that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. And Samuel heard all the words of the people, and he rehearsed them in the ears of the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, hearken unto their voice and make them a king. And Samuel said unto the men of Israel, go ye every man into his city. This is the reading of the word of the Lord. And I want to talk very briefly to you tonight about your will because we have been talking all month long. We've been in this Lenten season of talking about the soul. We've been talking about the soul in its three intricate parts, the mind. We've been ta we talked about the mind for two weeks and then we went into your emotions and how you cannot allow your emotions to get the best of you. And on this fifth Wednesday of the month, as did last um, Wednesday, we talk about the will. We talked last week on what it looks like when our will is contradictory to God and what we must do to have a will that aligns with God. So we're still talking in this Soul Food for Lenten series about the will. And tonight's subject is willful disobedience. Willful disobedience. There are times in our lives where we choose to be willfully ignorant. We do not want to acknowledge what is right. We do not want to acknowledge knowledge what is wrong in our lives. We don't want anybody to tell us anything. We have deaf ears to the things of God, but yet we want to continue to open up our ears to what people that are talking, our jargon are talking about. We don't want to have, hear sound doctrine. We don't want to know what God is speaking in this season. We actually go to sleep on God, but we are awake and we're so woke in the world. You hear it every time. People talking about we woke, you know, if you woke in this season, then people got this in, but we are the woke walking dead in so many aspects of our lives as a collective when we do not come together to hear the will of God. When we do not uh, raise up in the morning and say, God, what is it that you will have for me to do today? Here in 1 Samuel, the 7th chapter, and the 8th chapter, I'm sorry, and verse 19, it says, nevertheless, the people refused. They refused, meaning that they knew that something better was there, but they refused. They were willfully disobedient to God. They refused to obey the voice of who God sent, which was the man of God in the person of Samuel. Are you refusing to hear the men and the women of God who are preaching the gospel the good news of Jesus Christ because what they are saying is contradictory to what you are doing it says nevertheless the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel there were people who were perhaps lined up and said he puts his pants on one leg at a time like I do maybe she puts her dress on and she slips her dress on the way that I slip my dress on so I don't have to hear what they're saying but you know how it ignorant it is of us that's called willfully being ignorant because we are in a place where we don't want to hear what God wants us to hear we have become obstinate we have become stubborn to the things of God but I come by here to tell you on today that we must open up our heart we must become repentant and we must ask the Lord 
Lord to come in and to dwell in us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. And they said, nay, we are not after having heard and after the man of God told them, this is what a king is going to do. He's going to take your sons. He's going to take them away. He's going to take your all of yours away. What if somebody came to you and they knocked on your door? Let's say that they don't even knock like the no knock warrants. And they just come into your house. Do y'all see what's happening today? And they can just take your property away from you. Perhaps you live on the southern border of California. And there was a president. There was a king. There was an office that says we're going to build a wall. And if the government wants to, we can build it on your property. Come on here. Maybe they want to widen out the street. You know why streets do lead to hell sometimes. And then they want to widen out. But the city comes in and says, we're going to have to take, come on here, somebody, your property. You wouldn't like that. But here it is that they come in and he tells them, if you get this king, I'm telling you what's going to happen in your life. You're going to be having things that are going to be taken away from you. Your daughters are going to be bakers and your daughters are going to be confectionaries. It's right there in verse 13. They're going to be turned over to be cooks. Your sons are going to be out there tilling the field. They're going to be you used as instruments of war. They're going to be used as instruments for the chariot of this king. Why? Because this king will not have a mindset for your children. This king will not have a mindset for your son. They will set your king, your sons, and your daughters who are designed to be kings and queens up for peasantry. They will set them up to have to go into war and go into war zones. Is this really what you want? But some people just want what they want. They're not thinking about it. They're not going to the polls to vote. They're not trying to figure out what's going to happen in the midterm elections so that they can put the right people in the places to make the legislation and do the things that need to be done. They're not concerned about who's the pastor of the church because they like to get a itch, a word that itches, that, that scratches the itch of their ears. They want somebody that's going to tell them that if you get in a $200 line, you're going to get a $20,000 20, uh, 20, uh, $20, miracle. You can go down there to the casino for that. If God has not placed it on your heart to given the offering today. You don't have to stand in the line to buy a miracle. This is not let's make a deal. This is not a place where you spin the wheel and here comes God. We've been playing with God, but we have allowed for kings and queens to be erected in our lives. We have allowed for people to become the mayors of our cities, the government of our states, even the president of great nations who have taken us around in circles. Perhaps the season that we are in in a pandemic is because we have chosen those to lead our country who has led our country and even in some other places our world astray. Come here, Ukraine. Come here, Russia. This is what happens when we allow people who just said a few months ago we'll never invade Ukraine but they're in Ukraine, in Ukraine needing to pull out today but when the church rises up we will have a voice to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying Samuel was crying out and Samuel was telling them and the Lord gave a word to Samuel tell them this is what they're in for if they walk in obedience but nonetheless we read the newspaper we see what's on the news and still get yeah, we refuse to turn toward God. Therein lies a problem because we still don't trust God. We trust the prophets of Facebook. We trust the prophets of Instagram that can't do anything in an instant, but you got an instant God that can change your situation in an instant, but you're looking at Instagram. And then, you know, there's Twitter where we're looking and we're finding out what's going on by Twitter, but there is a word already in the Bible, a prophetic message, a word from the Lord that is already there to warn us and to tell us what happens when we aren't kept. To tell us what happens when we tell God what we want rather than saying, God, what is your will for my life? And the mistake here in the text is all, it always comes by some, some kind of sin. We see that some men get elected, evil men get elected, evil women get elected into office. Why? Because they pounce on and they play on the emotions. There's their word again, on the emotions of people because in the last administration, folks was hurt and they were ready for a change. And so any type of change, no matter what the change, looks like they just ready for a change you got in a bad relationship that ended up in marriage and ought to end up in divorce why because you were ready for a change from the previous relationship only to jump out of the pot into the skillet 
how many times does this happen in our lives because we won't wait on God. We just want to have what we want to have even if we got to make it ourselves. But the sons of Samuel, they, 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 they were doing all kinds of evil. They were not living like their father. And so now the people are upset. The Bible says don't provoke the children to wrath. And the sons of Samuel were just like the sons of Eli. And church, we got to handle what's going on in the house because if we don't handle what's going on in the house, we're going to provoke the people to make decisions that they should not be making. People are saying, I don't want to go to church because this pastor is sleeping with that pastor's wife or this pastor is sleeping with that pastor or, you know, the deacons are going all through the church. People don't want to go to church. And when you're the sad part about it is when you check it out, it might be the truth. That's the problem, is that when you check it out, Mother Vicky, it very well may come out to be the truth. But the, And God is looking, and God is saying, I want to deal with my people. I got a deal. Come on here, somebody, with the church. And so he tells Samuel, Samuel made his sons judges. And because of their behavior, because of what was in their heart, it wasn't their title. The first thing I want to tell you on tonight is that your title does not make you obedient. And as a matter of fact, we're bestowing titles and laying hands on folks that never showed that they should have had the title in the first place. There ought to be a lifestyle that you have before you get the title that if you lose the title, you still got your character. You can strip me down and you can call me bearer, but at the end of the day, I'll still be the same Christian that I was when I was pastor. You're still going to be what you were when you got the title. And so here it is that it was not about the judges because we tend to look and we tend to think that all police are bad because a couple of police showed up on Memorial Day a couple of years ago on national TV. We see them put their foot and their knee in the, in the nape of a man's neck. And, and, and so now all police are bad. No, 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 honey. Not all police are bad. Those police, before they put their badges on, they were evil people. Come on here, somebody. And I want to tell you that the the preacher that stands up and sleeps with everybody in the church, the preacher that curses you out, the preacher that robs you of your money is a bad person, not just a bad preacher. They were a bad person before they became a bad preacher. And so we look at titles. And so now people, the people in the text have a problem with the title. Well, we just done with judges, period. And, and it was not the judges, it was the boys. And they should have been done with Samuel's boys, but they said, we don't want judges anymore. So the children have been provoked to wrath now. So it's not that just the Israelites have gone astray, but come here, church, because you play a role in that prophet, priests, and kings, evangelists, and apostles, and teachers. When we do not handle what's going on in our faces, even in our households, we are part of the provocation that causes the problem. And so here in the text on tonight, in verse 3, it talks about the problem, how they didn't walk in the ways of their father, how they turned aside after filthy lucre and took bribes and perverted the judgment. Why? Because they wanted everything to fit their cause and to be the way that they wanted it to be. Verse 4 says, then all the elders came and they gathered together to Samuel and said, we don't want any more judges because your sons have not done well. They've not walked as you walk and you're getting old. And so since you're getting old, we won't have anybody. So we're going to go ahead and fix the problem ourselves. But the thing that's pleased Samuel when, when they said, give us a king to judge us. Why? Because Samuel's been with the Lord and he understands that God is the king over all things. And some of us are asking for supplemental things rather than getting God because there is no supplement. There is no substitute for what our God. The song says what our God can do, but I want to tell you for who God is. Because who he, he is in his isness, baby, will open up the doors for what he can do. And we've got to learn how to love God for who he is and not just for what he can, what he can do. And said unto him, behold, thou art old. Verse 4 says the thing displeased him. Verse 6 says the thing displeased him. Verse 7 says, and the Lord said unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of the people. What God, you want me to hearken unto their voice? He says, hearken unto their voice. If they won't judge us, they're not rejecting you, Samuel. It's not about you, but it's about me. They're rejecting me because I'm the one that decided for them to have judges and not kings. 
because I was going to be their king. But they looked around at other nations. How many of us are looking at our neighbors next door and we're saying our neighbors don't go to church and they got this and they got this. You're going to compare yourself with your neighbor and now you want to be like your neighbor and now you want to do this. We have to tell our children not to want to be like anybody else. God made you with your own fingerprint. God made you with your own footprint and he did so distinctly and uniquely for a reason. But the church is looking around today and the church is, yes, I'm hard on the church because I'm a part of the church and I want to see anything that I'm a part of thrive. And so I'm hard on me because I'm a part of the church today. We want to talk about the world, but we don't want to have a conversation at home. And the conversation that we're having tonight at home is that we have got to come in ourselves and see what it is that the father wants. But instead, we're looking at our neighbors and we want to be like our neighbors. Instead, we're thinking that the governor is going to solve the problem. Instead, we're saying, I I wonder what the president is going to do about this. Instead, we're wondering what the superintendent is going to do about it. Some of us are even wondering what the pastor is going to do about it. But I want to tell you all tonight that all we who have said yes to Jesus, all we who are saved ought to come together. And when we come together, we ought to come together as a collective army of a body of believers and say, devil, we don't care what you think you're going to do. It will not work because we have come together in the spirit of agreement to tell you what we found in the word of God and what we found in is that we are the head and not the tail. We are above only and not beneath. And we serve a God who is well able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask and I think so. If it's above what we ask and think, then we're going to keep our mind. That's part of your soul. Stayed on Jesus. We're going to put our emotions in check. We're not going to let you take us back from pillar to post and bipolarism. But we're going to be steadfast and we're going to be stable in our emotions. We're going to allow our will to line up with the will of God. We're not going to let the entertainment world come into the church. Because the church is not a place for you to be entertained. We've allowed so much performance in the church that the miracles are not taking place. We're pushing people down at the altar. Talking about we laying hands on. No, you push them down and they fail. That's what had happened. Yeah, that's what had happened. And they got up off of the ground at the altar and they left church the very day. If I messed up your if, if I messed up your conference and your next convention, I meant to. We had got people coming to the altar paying for miracles and still being sick in their body and dying. That was not the will of God, church. And if you have been through a pandemic and you still gonna buck God like that, well, I want to tell you ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And the Lord said unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of the people. God will give you what you want. Keep on playing with God. He'll give you what you want. He said, hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected you. But keep preaching, preachers. Keep preaching, Minister Hill. Keep saying what you're saying, Pastor Crystal. Keep on, Minister Carolyn. Keep telling them, Mother Vicky. Keep on telling them, Elder Fuller. Keep telling your family what they need to hear, saints of God. Keep on opening up your mouth and doing and telling them, keep doing the right thing. He says, they don't come against you, but they come against me. According to all thy works, as which that they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt. They were an ungrateful people. They kept serving other gods, even though those other gods that they were serving could not bring them out. It was by the mighty hand of God that they came out. Dr. Sonia Mixon talked about how in her cancer, she died four times, but God raised her up. That's nobody but an amazing God when you're diagnosed with a stage four non-invasive cancer that comes into a um, very invasive cancer that comes into your body and comes to interrogate you and comes to take out everything that, 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 that God has placed on the inside of you. I can tell you by having coded in 2017 that it was nobody but God that raised me up off of the table. And when I would go back in 2021, the doctor said, I still don't know why I almost lost you a second time. We got to send you for treatment to see what's going on in your blood. When she started to tell me that there must have been a problem in my blood, they figured out what it was, but I said, God, I need you to step my blood with the blood of Jesus, God. I need you, Lord God, to write your blood in every cell in my body, God. That this time, when I would go back to surgery in November of 2021, when they put the medication in me, I said, God, I will not fear, Lord God, and this will not be the last time, God, that I wake up. And when I woke up 
in that recovery room and the doctor said, by the way, you still got your right ovary. That was an indication that we didn't see cancer. So we were able to leave you with your right ovary. Laying flat on my back, I began to give God some glory and I began to give God some prayer. I couldn't wait till I got to the sanctuary. Right then, right then, I had to say, Lord, I bless your name, God. God, I give you the glory. God will put you flat on your back. Come on here, somebody. And he'll let you just sit there where you can't do nothing but look up and say, Lord, I bless you. It wasn't mama that woke me up, God. It wasn't the doctors. The doctor put me to sleep, but the doctor sure didn't wake me up, God. God, I bless your name. God, I praise your name. Nobody does that but a wonderful God. Anybody know that God is good? But I'm going to tell somebody that you ought not to have to lay flat on your back to give God some praise. You ought to be able to give God praise and to obey God where you are. But I thank him that he got me up. He's a God of resurrection. I know I'm kind of early for a resurrection Sunday. But I want to tell somebody, just in case the Lord comes from me or all of us on tomorrow. Y'all, he's a God that got up on the third day morning. And I know that he got up with all power in heaven and earth. Glory to God. And it's because it's been too many times that he had to pick me up. It's been too many times that he had to turn me around. There have been some times in my life, if I tell you the truth, that he took my little shoulders and he said, Comfort, you're going in the wrong direction. And he had to take my shoulders and he had to turn me in the right direction. Won't God do it? My God. But you got to be willing to obey God. You got to be willing to obey God. You got to be, because if you keep on and continuing in sin, there's going to come a day that God will allow whatever it is that you want to happen in your life. They were selfish people. And so he said, tell them so that they're not ignorant. Tell them so that they're not ignorant of the things that they could go through if they don't, if they get what the other nations got. See, you looking over the fence at somebody else's house. You know they got turf, but you think that the grass is greener on the other side. You don't know how they got their grass over there. Instead of watering your grass, you looking over the fence and you're desiring that thing. The Ten Commandments says that you should not desire the things of your neighbor, but they wanted the things of their neighbor. So God said, well, you can have what your neighbors have. Verse 19. Verse 19 tells us, nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. And they said, nay, but we have a king. We will have, we will, we will, we will. We're determined that we're going to have a king over us. What is it that you determined to have that does not align with the will of God? You got to get your will to line up with the will of God. Sometimes our contrary will will buy us into something that we have no business doing. We saw on Sunday evening what happens when your will takes over you. While the world is talking about Will Mitchell and, and Chris Rock, I just believe that God it was using Will Mitchell. I mean, not Will Mitchell, but Will, Will, Will Smith, glory to God, was using Will Smith to help us out. Minister Hill had to take his whole mess down to tell me, Pastor, you wrong. But Will Smith, Will Smith was, I, I, I believe the reason his name is Will, come on here somebody, is to help a barrel Cawthorn out on a Wednesday. That when your will is not submitted, come on here, to the will of God, come on here y'all, that you'll walk up like Will did and you'll let your will get the best of you because your emotions and your mind not right. Your soul not right. And I believe on Sunday night that we saw the whole issue of a soul that is in turmoil. When your mind is not in the right place. And when, 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 when somebody comes at you and your mind has changed. And, and when your emotions get the best of you. And so you just walk up and you do what you will. will. And, and, and we see a Chris Rock that does what the Bible says do. That you got to turn the other cheek. But I thank God for what happened on Monday evening. When Will finally got it right. And Will says, but I thank God that I can go to my brother. And do what it says in the book of Matthew. Matthew says that all we got to do is take that brother. And go to that brother or that sister. Don't take no messy people with you. But take somebody like a Denzel Washington. Somebody that wants the best for you and for Chris. And you can go to them. And then 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 what you can do is you can say I was wrong for what I did and I want to apologize to you personally and publicly to tell you that what I did was not the right thing to do and some of us need to have an experience like that that when our will is outside of the will of God that we will
will do courageous things like Will Smith did, and we will go back and we will say, look, Chris, I'm wrong for what I did, but just in case you're a Christian on today, maybe your will got out of control. And maybe it's not Chris that you need to go to, but maybe it's Christ that you need to go to. And maybe you need to go to Christ and say, Father, I have sinned and I have fallen short of your glory, God. But I come to you today in the name of Jesus, Father. And I want to tell you, Lord God, that maybe I thought I wanted a king, God. But I recognize that you are the king of kings and the Lord of lords, God. I put down my weapons today, God. I put down my lust today, God. I put down my desires today, God. I put away that bad relationship, God. I put away that bad language and every alternative, God, that I've had, God. And I want you to know, God, that you are my everything, God. Everything that I need, God, you are, God. Forgive me, Lord God, for getting out of control, God. Forgive me for thinking the thoughts that I thought, God. Forgive me for getting in my feelings, Lord God. I want to ask you today, God, to save my soul. And so you can ask God. To save your soul. The world is talking and gossiping about that thing. But I believe that God allowed that thing to happen so that we could see ourselves and not just see who what, what the characters in that thing. But we ourselves are some characters, some real characters, right? And so I believe God wanted us to see ourselves and get the message that we need to get out of that thing. So they did wrong. They had, they had somebody who told them, and after they were willfully ignorant, they decided to stay in their ignorance, and in, the, in their ignorance, they became willfully disobedient. Who is it that's saying today, Father, I want to give my life back to you? Lord, I don't want to be willfully disobedient anymore, but God, I want to know right from wrong. And I want you to help me to put one foot in front of the other and go in the right direction to do what it is that you would have me to do, God. God, I want to come out of sin. I want to come out of everything that I've been into, God. And God, I want to worship you. I want to worship you in spirit and in truth because they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You can be restored today. Salvation, rededication, infilling with the precious Holy Spirit. Church membership, who's coming today for salvation? You're saying, Lord, I want my soul saved. If that's you, I want you to make your way to the altar or right there at home. Just lift up your hands and say, Lord, I need you to come into my life, Lord God. I want to be saved from my iniquities, from my sins, from my transgressions, oh God. God, I want you to take over full control over my life. Protect me from those that lurk after me. Protect me from myself even now, God. Create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew, renew the right spirit within me. Who is it that's saying that I want to give my life back to Christ? If that's you, you can come today. Perhaps you've known him already, but you're saying I want to come back. I want to recommit because I don't want to die and go to hell. If that's you, you can come. You can recommit your life. You can have a blessed assurance that Jesus is yours and that you belong to Jesus. Who's coming to the altar today? Who's there at home and saying, God, I recommit my life unto you, God. God, I don't want to live like I've been living, God, but I'm going to need your help if I'm going to change. If that's you today, you can make your way. Who is it that needs special prayer? He knows what we have need of before we ask, but we did an ask series here. Still on YouTube. Go back and look at that ask series. You got to learn how to ask, how to seek, and how to knock. And God will answer. He will answer. I'm telling you, Ja'Kayla is here tonight. God will answer. Sister Ollie, I talked to her over the weekend. God will. Come on here, somebody. Yes, he will. He will answer. I'm still preaching today. God will answer prayer. Hallelujah. We've suffered many losses, but nevertheless, we're still here by the grace. Come on here. By the grace of God. Hallelujah. We're still here. Maybe you need a church home. I want you to be a member of the kingdom of God, but I want you to do so by way of the Grace Hill Church. If that's you, I want you to become a member of this church where God is moving. He's moving like never before. I believe Mother Vicky said, as for me in my house. Her whole household is here tonight. We're going to church because I want to see a change in everybody. Just think if we all stood up and said, as for me in my house, I want, we, we're just going to spend an hour in the, we do what we want to do, but we're going to spend an hour in the presence of the Lord. If that's you, that's you, I want you to become a part tonight. 
Maybe you're here tonight and you're saying, Pastor, I just want somebody to believe God with me. I want to be filled with the precious Holy Ghost to turn my shoulders around and point me in the right direction. Glory to God. If that's you, he'll fill you. But you got to be saved. First, let him come into your heart. Let him live with you. And he'll fill you. He'll fill up the empty places. He'll fill up the void places in your life. He'll fill you. I'm talking about Jesus on this evening. Won't you let him come into your heart? Won't you let him live? And won't you let him dwell in you? Father, we thank you for those who are making a decision tonight. We have done as you have commanded, yet there is still room for all who want to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on and put those blessed hands together for Jesus. Come on, bless his holy and his righteous name. Where's your hallelujah? Glory to God. Don't let the match muffle your hallelujah. God, I give you glory. Come on, God, I give you praise. Hallelujah. I bless God. I thank him. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. Glory to God. It is offering time and we are continuing to worship the Lord in our giving on tonight. As we give tonight, we give in faith. And so the ushers are going to serve those of you who are not giving by way of give Lafay, but you're giving in the envelope, just raise your hand and they will give you that envelope tonight. We ask that you not seal the envelope. Glory to God. We're giving in faith tonight. We're watching God move in our lives. Remember, you came by a miracle, but you can say thank you for the miracles that are coming, the ones that are happening, and the ones that have been. You can thank him for it. And so let your seed be a thank you, Lord, not a can I have, because he's already told you in the word that you can have it. So you're thanking him for it in advance, or whether you're thanking for what he has done, or whether you're thanking him for what he is doing. You can see tonight, a tenth unto the Lord is holy, so we bring the holy tenth unto the Lord. Malachi 3 tells, says, will a man rob God? Yes, send the tithe and the offering, but we're not God robbers, we're givers tonight. Because we want him to pour out through the windows of heaven that we might not have room enough to receive. Glory to God. That's the God who we serve tonight. And so we praise him and we bless him. So we're giving him faith tonight by way of GiveLify on our phones or our digital um, devices. Or we're giving in the house tonight as God has blessed us to give tonight. We are grateful. The testimony of a new job came through, Mother Vicki. So we're celebrating. Amen. And we believe in God that we're having more testimonies. Oh, don't tell me your business because I'm going to tell your testimony. Amen. If it's good news, we're going to tell it in this house. And so we're continuing to pray. Um, again, I went to visit with Sister Cheryl Meshack and her granddaughter today, Sha Angel Miracle. And so we're believing that God is going to bring her out of this thing. And that the doctors, the nurses, and everyone coming into her care are going to be giving glory to God. We pray over their hands and we pray over their minds that God will infuse them with wisdom and understanding for how to take care of this baby who belongs to the Lord. And y'all know that her grandmother will shout and will talk about Jesus and praise the Lord. But we're shouting and we're believing God and we're trusting. That's the work of the, the churches to pray. And so we bless God and we thank God. We want to turn our attention to our announcements at this time.
Praise the Lord. Let us govern ourselves according to these announcements. We thank God. Father, we thank you for these seeds. Even now, you give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. But we don't eat our seeds. We sow our seeds into good ground. That there be a mighty harvest. Not just in this house, but even in the community that we serve. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As you're giving in the house, <clears throat> as you're giving in the house tonight, let us not forget to pray for one another. Let us not forget that we're also bringing non-perishable items and we're bringing socks, non-perishable items in our socks to be a blessing to those in the community. We, um, it's warming up outside and again, we want to pray for those who have had um, damage from the storms. We do want to pray and it is springtime and so we are so grateful. We're believing this virus is going to get out of the world. And so let's continue to pray and do our part amen we're standing all over the building tonight father the lord bless thee and keep thee the lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee the lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace father in the name of jesus i bless you and i thank you for these your people as we have heard your word, let us go out now to live and to apply this word. We come against every demon and devil in hell, God, that will try to take this word away from us. Help us not to be willfully disobedient people, God, but to walk hard after you, Lord God. We come against every infirmity that the enemy sends our way, God. We declare and decree healing, Lord God. We pray over Minister Carolyn's parents right now, God. Touch now her mother, Lord God. Strengthen her, Father God, as she continues to outwit the doctors, God, as she continues to outwit the nurses, God. We pray over her right now and we send the word to heal and to deliver her, even now, God, in the name of Jesus. We pray over the Jewett family on tonight, God. And we just ask, God, that you would touch the Jewett family and every bereaved family on tonight, God. We ask that you would just touch them and that strengthen them, God. Be now every source um, for them as they have need even now, Lord God. You're the God who can do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask and that we think, Lord God. We pray for those who are steeped in depression, steeped in debt, Father God, steeped in, Father God, sin, God. We ask now, God, that you will just bless those who are trying to do your will, God, your way, God. Those who have turned away from you, Lord God, we pray for their reconciliation even now, God. God, there is a remnant here at the Grace Hill Church, God, that refuses to let you go, God. That's our ref refusal on tonight, God. We don't take what Satan is trying to sell us, oh God. And God, we pray, God, that you order now our steps, God. And such as you have ordered, that we will walk therein, God. We come against everything that tries to claim our attention, tries to claim our wealth, tries to claim anything about us, Lord God, that tries to claim our health. And we declare and we decree, God, that we are free, Lord God. We are free to because where the spirit of the Lord is, God, there is a liberty in the name of Jesus. We pray for our sisters and brothers in the Ukraine right now, God. We pray, God, for Russian soldiers, Lord God, that while they are there, God, that they will have a heart that you gave them, Lord God, to do right by the people in Ukraine, oh God. The wars that are breaking out in Ethiopia, Lord God, we pray for, in the name of Jesus, the ecological things that are happening, the economical things that are happening. God, you're the God that controls it all, God. Have your way, God, like never before. And God, we declare, unlike those in the text, that you are the King of Kings, God, and that you, God, are the Lord of Lords, and we lift up the name of Jesus on tonight, God, because we recognize that there is power, wonder, working power, God, and it's in no other name but in the name, God, of Jesus. So we cry out, Abba, Father, and Father God, we ask now that you just have your way, God, that even as we travel to our homes on tonight, God, that we find them better because we are better, Lord God. We thank you, Heavenly Father. Oh, we thank you and we bless your holy, oh God, and your righteous name, God, rain down miracles like never before, God. Walk through ICUs on tonight, God. Have now your way, God, in the name of Jesus. Turn the circumstance around, God. 
We pray for Sha Angel on tonight, God. Touch her, God, from the crown of her head, God, to the sole of her feet, God. Oh, God, we bless you, God. Touch the sciatic nerve on her, God. Touch her heart and her lungs, God. We ask that every organ system, that they begin to function as you have created them, God. We thank you that we are brand who have been plucked from the fire, God. We are a brand, God, that is sealed with the Holy Ghost on tonight, God. Oh, God, we bless your name, Jesus. We shout hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Lord. We thank you in this place in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. This is my prayer for you. can go to be restored and made whole. There's a place. Just for me to be free and see the unseen on a hill. There's the cross of Calvary. It gives me mercy 